Good morning, students. Let's take a look at what we're doing for math today. So we're working on number 118. You can go ahead and cross out the wrap up. I'm gonna go ahead and skip doing any multiplication problems with this since we did it yesterday. But today we're doing multiplying by six and nine. Um, so remember, you can use your whiteboards for this. Just have your parents sign that, that you use the whiteboard. And on the back side, you do have to write on this paper. So moving along, we only have one more worksheet that we need to get through. So let's take a look starting again by um, looking at millimeters. We're going to draw our line up here. Sorry, I've got... Here we go. So we need to make sure we line up our line and we're doing 63 millimeters. So we're going to go up to the six and then we have to go up three lines. One, two, three. And that's where we'll draw our circle. Hope your line came out straighter than mine. So 63 millimeters long. And how many centimeters is it? Well, we do six for centimeters since these, this is a centimeter ruler. So these numbers go for centimeters. And then instead of saying uh, 63, it's gonna be 6.3. How can I figure this out without looking at my ruler if I've already, if I already know what millimeters it is? Just take the decimal in millimeters, which would be right here, and then we'll move it over to get centimeters. So instead of being 63, it'll be 6.3. Let's take a look at our first problem. How many days are in four years? Okay, so does anyone remember how many days are in one year? So we have 365 days in one year. So how would you guess that we're gonna solve this problem? What are we gonna do here? What's my number sentence gonna be? Well, we have to think about leap year because if we're doing four years, then one of those years is going to have an extra day, right? So what would be the easiest way to do this? Because if I have four years at 365 days, um, that would be equal groups, right? And if it's equal groups and I don't know the total number of days, I can use one operation, multiplication. So why don't we do it like this? We'll do four times 365 days, but then we're gonna add one day because of leap year, right? So let's go ahead and use our workspace for this. So we have 365 times four. I'm gonna go ahead and use my colored pens for this. So what's four times five? 20, drop my zero, carry my two. And then how about four times six? 24 plus two, 26. I'm gonna drop my six, carry my two. And then lastly here, I have four times three, which is 12 plus two more gives me 14. So I've got 1460 and then I need to do what? Am I done here? No, I need to add one, which equals 1461 as my answer. So I'm going to write 1461, 1461 days in four years. Could have been really easy to get this wrong because if we don't remember that there's a leap year every four years, then we would get it wrong by only one point, by only one digit, right? Which we don't want. So make sure we're thinking um, as best we can about these. So if you have a problem on the back, which you most likely will, that's very similar, don't forget about the leap year. All right, let's take a look. We're gonna find the products now. So we're just finding the answers to the multiplication problems. So notice, we have parentheses here and whatever's in parentheses, we have to do first. So what's seven plus one? Eight. So now my um, problem is just three times eight, which equals 
24. Perfect. Now I have two times four times seven. You can actually multiply whatever you want to multiply um, first, but what's two times four? Eight, what's eight times seven? 56, perfect. So notice it looks kind of scary at first, but once we simplify it, these are just simple multiplication facts that we already know. With this being no exception, right? We know four times six, we just did this, is 24. Drop my four, carry my two. Six times seven now gives me, man, I've been saying this room so much the past few days. Fell on my shoe, picked it up, it was 42 plus two more, 44. So drop my four, carry my other four. And then finally here, I'm gonna do three times six. Three times six gives me 18, plus four more gives me 22. So my answer is 2,244. Remember, use colored pencils or use colors if you need help. Um, keeping everything organized. All right, let's take a look at number three. It says, draw nine candies, circle one third of the candies. Okay, so how do we do this? We've got this big rectangle here. <clears throat> so why don't we um, go ahead and use the rectangle to help us out with this? So we're gonna draw nine candies. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we need to circle one third of the nine candies. So basically I could break this up into three groups, right? So, and then I'm just gonna pick one of those groups and then how many candies is in the one group? Three. So one third of nine is gonna be three. How about number four? Mr. Howarth has 16 pencils. If he gives each child two pencils, how many children will get pencils? What is this problem asking us to do? It's asking us to find out how many children will get pencils. What information do I need to use to solve the problem? Well, he has 16 pencils and he's giving each child two pencils. Do we know the total number of pencils that he has? We do. Is it equal groups if each child is going to get two pencils? It is. So what operation are we going to use here? Division. So we're going to take which number goes first in division? The biggest number. So we have 16 divided by 2. That's the only other number we have. And what is our answer? If you memorize it, you know the answer is 8. But if I didn't memorize it, what do I do? I take the smallest number, I count by it, stopping when I get to the biggest number, and I see how many times I counted. So I'd go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. How many twos do I have? Five, six, seven, eight. So eight's my answer. How could I write this as a multiplication problem? I would do two, times an unknown number gives me 16. Remember, in multiplication, where do we usually have the biggest number? Last, because we're taking two numbers and we're multiplying them, so our answer is gonna be bigger than these two numbers. Whereas with division, I'm taking a big group of things and I'm breaking them down into smaller groups, right? So that's why we have the big number that we start with when we use this division symbol. And then our answer is usually smaller than that. So now I know two times eight is 16. So my answer is going to be eight. And if I'm asking how many children will get pencils, is my answer eight pencils or eight children? Eight children. Perfect. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. It says circle the picture that matches this problem. So there needs to be 16 total pencils. And then we want, uh, let's see, two, each child gets two pencils and there are eight children. So which one of these are we going to circle if we wanna show that each child gets two pencils? 
pause the video if you need some time to look at it or think it over. It's gonna be this one. Cause look, first of all, we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So our total is 16. Then we have the pencils are in groups of two. So we know that each group of two is a child. So notice there's eight children, eight of these circles, and in the circle is two pencils. So that's why we're gonna pick that one. Let's take a look at the next problem here, number five. Draw what the number four will look like when it is rotated around a point. Okay, so remember the easiest way to do this would be um, for this one, since we're getting, we're using an actual number, would be to just get a small piece of paper and draw whatever it is on there. So you have the number four and we're drawing it like they draw it. We're gonna put a little point here. So when it's in front of the point, it's gonna look normal. So I'm gonna draw my four like this. If I rotate it to the side, now it's gonna look like this on the side. So you might need to change your paper because it's kind of hard to draw. So now I'm gonna rotate it around this way. And so now it's completely upside down. And then finally, when I bring it over, rotating it this way, it's a little bit different than it was over here because notice over here, you have this point facing up and over here, the point's gonna be facing down. So you might need to put your paper around, turn your this paper around to make your fours if you don't want them to end up looking like mine. Oh geez, I used the camera when I was talking about this so I didn't see that there's a little spot to do that over here. But um, yeah, so you would just make sure the fours are in here. If you wrote it next to it like I did, that's fine too. But they do have a spot for you here. Okay, last problem. This was really quick. Number six. What is the place value of the digit six in 690? Hundreds. Perfect. What digit is in the tens place in the number 573? Well, we have ones, tens, hundreds. So the digit is seven. Easy peasy. What is the value of the digit five in 251? Well, easy. The value of the digit five is 50 because it is also in the tens place, just like our seven was in 573. But notice it's important that you recognize these questions and you know what each one is asking you because you don't wanna write, um, for this one, the value of the digit five. I don't wanna write um, tens as my answer. That would be incorrect if I wrote tens here. We're asking how much is this five worth? It's worth 50 in that spot, right? If I was asking what's the value of the digit five and it was in the number 521, I would say 500, right? Just like an expanded form. And then for this one, we're, when we're asking place value, that one's easy, um, or no, sorry, tens place. We just go ones, oh, tens is right here, so it's seven. For this one, now we're asking place value. So is it ones, is it tens, or is it hundreds? So for this one, you have to pay attention. I can't say hundred. I have to say hundreds because that's the place value that it is. So just make sure you, you understand how to answer these questions. Let's take a look at what you're going to be doing for homework. So how many days are in five years? Notice if it's five years, are you gonna have to add an extra day? Yes, there's a leap year every four years. So in five years, there would still be one leap year. So you can do this the same way we did on the front, adding the one to the problem. How about the next one? Find the products. Remember, we're gonna start with the number in parentheses before we multiply. And then we are going to, um, you can use colored, um, pencils if you want to, to do this one here. Draw eight stars, circle one fourth of the stars and write the answer here. How many did you circle? Number four, Mr. Dodds has 12 pencils. If he gives each child three pencils, how many children will get pencils? You need a number sentence and an answer. You need to bracket and underline your question. 
So then we're still doing number four. It says circle the picture that matches this problem. Number five, draw what the number seven will look like when it's rotated around the point. Get a small piece of paper, maybe the same one you used for your classwork. And on the back, draw your seven, take it and rotate it around the circle. So that way you know what it's gonna look like in each position. Sorry, I did a terrible job rotating right now. Um, last one, number six, what's the place value of the digit four in 342, which digit is in the hundreds place in the number 817, and what is the value of the digit nine in 960? If you're not sure what the question is asking you, look back on the front page and see what our answers were on the front page so that way you know what kind of answer you're gonna put for each of these questions here. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day.